be out of the, you know, just a plastic tray or just something, you know. Uh, you know just, I looked around. Put it on the bench near the edge of the bench, and I can get. This some is on a stand. Uh, <laughs> Well, you recommended him, and I went over to him. I'm all off of there, but maybe I didn't. Most important tool of all, nice cup of tea. So there was one of those little springs that got bent, but oh, all yeah. the rest of them held up. That's a crank bearing modification. Yeah. That's a weak point on these inventions is they, they the crank wobbles and they get the I think the impact wrench would be good for that. Doesn't happen yeah. as neat and tidy as it does with your ear filming, but got it off, they don't go all the way through. Oh, okay. All right. Well, I'll get rid of these. These come in various sizes, don't? Yeah, they do. To adjust the eye. Robert was. Nice touch, I, I, I noticed yeah, I noticed how he films himself with the correct I've been filming <laughs> with the correct <laughs> I film you with a hammer yeah, and me with a filmed us with the pry bar and nice hammer. shiny Whitworth socket. <laughs> See, that's a, that's, a, that's a whole new piece of metal, metal in there, and he didn't weld it. Uh, right. Welded it, and that, that and got it crooked. The weld. There's a spring in there, right? Did he There's get the spring? Little, I got the spring, yeah, but okay. I don't have the little detent thing. You got a magnet? That takes the main shaft gear out. And I would say that we don't have to mess with that. I think what will happen is this is the rod that supports the selector box. Okay. And then the flux should just come out. All right. So, so you are. And the reason he didn't weld it was he didn't want to warp the case. Because when you weld an aluminum, aluminum, it warps. I see. This is just a pin, I think, right. isn't it? Right. Well, we can leave that where it is. Gosh, that really is, isn't it? So this was the very first that was steady the, plate that you had that a was, look at the wearer here. That was new in 2007 and it My was gosh. Uh, replaced in 2011. Look how oval that is, that egg down there, isn't it? Well, that just shows you how much that shaft was wobbling. Oh gosh. But the engine was running. <laughs> I, I rode it into the, the 100 New York making this awful noise. Dan Smith was 
at the gas station filling up. And he said, what's that awful noise? And I said, I wish I knew. We've been, he said, let's tear it apart and see what's going on. So we did a parking lot teardown of this thing. Goodness. And uh, basically fixed it with JB Weld and some of Dan Smith's magic. Jeez. McDougal replaced all of these rod, all these the studs. Studs, yeah. Well, that's pretty sophisticated, Chris. Mm -hmm. So now we're ready to split the crankcases. Yeah. This is always the exciting part, isn't it? Yeah. Did that do it? No. Can you see the gap? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, we could easily pull here. Yeah, just I can hear the, it going. Oh, you can hear it pulling? Yeah. It's, it's, it's not happening. I mean, it's not nothing dramatic. But, but you're it, feeling it pull? Yeah. Let's do it again. Oh, oh yes. Awesome. That did it. Awesome. Now, now it's going. Okay, so we have successfully split the crank cases. Well, now you know it. what you're up against. And he had it glued pretty well. Yeah, right. It's loose now. my initials on it. Oh, forever. Beautiful. It is that you've got to pull straight yeah. when you've got a bearing like that. You can't be tilting. So it has a bearing here, which I think is a ball bearing, and I think that bearing is a roller bearing. Right, there. and the roller bearing stayed on the crankshaft, but we had to pull the ball bearing. Into the, box. the bearings stay put because these were wobbling around. You know, mm -hmm. when this gets out of whack right. and it works the bearings. They're rocking, don't you think? Yeah, it is. Oh, for sure, it's rocking. I mean, Yeah. All right, let's check the other one. Well, it's right around 50. 50. And then you push it the other way and it goes back to around 50. Okay. So we're taking the oil pump out next. Yep. Cool. And that's going to involve taking out all those punch locks that are holding that screw in there. Maybe that's the only one that counts. You can see where it's driven in there yeah. pretty well. There you go. That's it. Those uh, Phillips head or crosshead screws they use on most British bikes casings. Right. right there in there. Pretty much have to use an impact. Yeah. To do those or you just okay, that fits into the slot on the. Wow, that was good. <laughs> okay, there is the guts of the oil pump. It, it, it basically runs this eccentric, holds this plunge up and down. I think it runs on the that pin. Right, that, it does. That, yeah, and, and that, that pin runs in there. Yeah, and it slides up and down on that. Mm -hmm. All right, now. Well, I, I'm feeling there's nothing holding that crankshaft in there other than the, you 
know the fact that it's up. Oh, oh yeah, there it goes. Oh. <laughs> Definitely on mine, not the not the end play on the main. It's it's the rocking back and forth. Mm -hmm. Gosh. Well, there you go, Chris. I think you've achieved your goal. I think so. Favorite thing to go with Dad down to the local. Me too. Tip, and while he was unloading the trash, I'd be rummaging around. Yeah, right. <laughs> Me too. I would be I looking for bike frames. My dad, you're not bringing that home. <laughs> That's oh, just what I did. Dad is really good. At yeah, I remember that much. Yeah. I made bicycles as a kid. Right. And I sold them in the classified ads. Uh -huh. And I opened a post office account. And I saved enough money to get my first moped, my NVT Easy Rider. And then that led to other bikes. And that's what I was doing when I was a kid.